Hi, in this lecture, I'd like to introduce you to um, what's called an oscillator. Um, an oscillator is a system that uh, has some sort of periodic way of repeating its m motion or repeating its behavior. Um, an example of an oscillator could be a pendulum. Right, and so a pendulum is often, like the easiest pendulum is like you have a massive like little ball and it's connected by a string to some sort of fixed point at the top. And if you push this pendulum off to the side, keeping its string straight and taut and then let go, it'll drop down because of gravity and it will go kind of in a small part of a circle because the string is not going to stretch and this thing is just going to travel over here and then come back right it goes out and comes back and you can keep time with this because of its periodicity right um, an interesting thing about this oscillator is when the the ball gets to the highest positions we say that it's got the maximum potential energy and the kinetic energy that it has is zero because it's at the maximum height and it loses all its motion. But then when the ball gets down towards the middle instead, this is when it has a lot of kinetic energy, right? It's moving fast and the potential energy that it has is minimized. It's gotten to the lowest place that it can ever be. And then as it rises up to the other side, here it is on the other side, um, the situation energetically looks a lot like on, on the left. And you can see that what's happening is the energy that's stored in this oscillator is periodically transforming. In the case of the pendulum, it's transforming from uh, kinetic energy over to potential energy and then back. It's like the energy is sloshing back and forth. Um, so a different example of a pendulum that I'm going to, I mean, not a pendulum, uh, an oscillator that I'm going to use um, in a later video when I describe um, waves. Uh, let me go ahead and describe that as an example oscillator here. So instead of um, having a pendulum, which is a mass on a string and it's swinging side to side, what we're instead going to have is a spring, not a string, but a spring. So a coiled up piece of metal. So here's a coiled up piece of metal. And on the end of it is a massive object, right? And what I can do is I can imagine pushing on the massive object, say I could push it up or at, which compresses the spring and increases the potential energy of the mass, or I could pull it down, you know, extending the spring and decreasing the potential energy, the gravitational potential energy, but somehow adding energy into the spring. And then when you let that thing go, right, this mass is going to go, let's say it's going down and then it comes back up and then it comes back down, right? It's going to oscillate. It's going to go up and down, uh, periodically repeating itself. Right? And so, uh, yeah. So, um, this is the situation that I'm going to use later. But for now, um, let's talk about F, T, and A. So, if the ball has a maximum height up here and a minimum height down here, it's just going back and forth between these two places, this has something to do with what's called the amplitude. So A for amplitude. Right? So that <clears throat> amplitude describes how far um, our oscillator is swinging. It also speaks to how much energy our oscillator has. If the oscillator has a large amplitude, 
then the amounts of energy that are going to get stored as potential energy and converted to kinetic energy, those energies can be quite large. So amplitude sort of speaks to energy. Um, there is another um, symbol, it's T. And so T actually stands for period. And it's the amount of time to repeat, right? That's called the period of this oscillation motion, right? Or this oscillator. And then there is another thing called the frequency. And the frequency is related to the period in a really simple way. It's just one over the period. So the period is often described in seconds, right? So seconds is a, you know, like a, a one second period or a half second period, right? Or a 10 second period for something that seems to be kind of slow in oscillation. An example of something that everybody is aware of that's an oscillator is the periodicity of the earth traveling around the sun. And the earth takes 365 days to travel all the way around the sun back to the place it starts from, right? That's the periodicity, and that's called the year. Um, so frequency is a different description of the oscillator, but it's uh, related to the period. It's just the flip over. And this unit is the per second. And the per second is also known as the hertz, right? So often you see the unit hz. That's called the hertz. It's a unit of frequency. You can also describe it as the per second because it's literally one divided by the second. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, so with this example of the mass on the end of a spring, so here is the coiled up piece of metal. And the massive ball on the end of it. And let's just say that it's attached to some ceiling, right? So this thing right here is a spring, right? If you stretch it, it's going to pull back. And if you compress it, it's going to push out, right? And this thing is just some mass. So the way that you add energy, that is the way that you do positive work on the system, Right? So remember, work is a special physics word. Work is the way that you add or subtract energy from a system. And if an external agent does positive work on this system, then what's happening is that external force or that external, uh, sometimes it's referred to as an agent, so that external agent is going to lose energy because it is giving energy to the oscillator. The oscillator is taking the energy, right? This is an overall conservation of energy. So an example of an external agent is a person. So here is a person and they reach under the ball like this and they apply an upwards force. And they apply this upwards force over a displacement in the same direction. And if they apply a force in the same direction, you notice that the directions are both up, right? So the person pushes the ball upwards and the ball actually moves upwards. This is considered the case of doing positive work and the oscillator is gaining energy. There's a really interesting situation where it's called resonance, and what this person could do is they could push on the ball, they could push upwards on the ball every time the ball is actually moving upwards, right? And if you do this, if you periodically use this force only in the same direction as the direction that the ball is already moving, that is in the direction of the ball's velocity, then you only ever add energy to your oscillator. 
And this is called a resonance um, situation. So in resonance, an oscillator can pick up a bunch of energy to the point where at some point, if you just continue resonating the oscillator, the oscillator will destroy itself, right? So that's called resonance. And that's a situation of some external force uh, providing a periodic force that's in time with how the oscillator oscillates, right? You can, uh, a person can also, or not just a person, but a, an external agent or a, some sort of other system can also remove energy from the oscillator. And the way it does that is it has to do negative work. Positive work is done when the force and the displacement are in the same direction. In the drawing, they're both upwards at the same time. But you can have the same direction if they're both downwards at the same time or both towards the right at the same time, all right? But when you do negative work, what you do is if the displacement, say, is down, then the way that an external agent would remove energy from the oscillator, they would do negative work by applying a force in the opposite direction. And whenever the force is in the opposite direction to the displacement, what happens is you remove kinetic energy. You remove, well, you remove energy. Um, examples of forces that do this are friction. Friction always is an external force on some system that's in the opposite direction to which way the system is moving, right? That's how friction works. Air resistance is another case that works really similarly. If a ball is falling downwards through the air, the air is going to push upwards on the ball. That's how air resistance works. In the case of an oscillator, when, when there are these forces that are in the opposite direction to how the oscillator is displacing or moving, that's referred to as a dampening force because what that force is doing is dampening away the oscillations, right? Uh, yeah, so dampening is, a, is associated with doing negative work. Yeah, and that's it for this little lecture. So, um, okay.